Well, actually, no, I was in a car crash and then got PTSD and didn't want to go back into martial arts and then just sort of started dabbling in boxing and then decided to make the full transition across. Yeah, because we do actually have it on here about the car crash because I've seen it on the... Um, I was trying to watch through the documentary as well, but for some reason I couldn't get on there and get an account and watch it. But I've seen... I seen When I was watching the trailer, I was like, yeah, this, look, this looks good. Um, what was that period of time like for you with the car crash? Because I know you've said on other podcasts that you went for like a stage of depression as well. What was that, if you don't mind speaking about it, what was it like for you getting over that? What was it like getting over it? It just felt like, I don't know, I am feel like I've been like a super positive person like nearly all my life. Just always had lots of energy, always bouncing off the walls. You know, the minute the alarm goes off in the morning, I want to wake everyone up and be like, come on, like, let's start the day. Like, I'm that annoying person. <laughs> when everyone's like, no, I want to sleep. <laughs> High energy. Like, yeah. you know, like, <laughs> Where you start bouncing. Yeah, <laughs> <love it. laughs> like, zap open the curtains, you know, like, I want to pull everyone out of bed. Um, and I just felt like I had no zest for life anymore. I didn't really see the point. I was like, literally, if something so out of your control, like a car crash, can just be like the end of your life at any point. Like, what's the point in trying to leave a legacy? What's the tr point in trying to be the best when it can just completely be taken away? Mm. Like, why does everyone try? It's like, like what is purpose? Wh I mean, why? It can like, just end like that. Completely that? Yeah. And I just, I obviously recognise there are really unhealthy thoughts, but genuinely, like, I didn't see the purpose in anything. Like, why why bother and it was it was really dark and usually people are like oh like you know just put us put on a smile and i think that's the first time i really appreciated what it was like to be in like a bit of a depressive state because mm. everyone around you was like oh like just put a smile on do things that make you happy and you're like oh but you don't get it like i just feel numb to the world yeah i just don't feel like doing that and like yeah i could put on a smile but actually that's making me feel worse because now i'm having to be someone that i'm not yeah and then it just for me anyway, it made me want to like hide away from friends and family because I didn't want to pollute them with... That negativity. Yeah, the negativity. Like, a, that I wanted them to be happy and I didn't want my problems to become <laughs> theirs. And then I started reaching out to like therapists. But it was more like an eye roll. I'll reach out to a therapist, but in my head I had this like thought that I'm doing this because I know I should, but I'm doing it really to say that they can't help. Yeah. Because I don't believe anyone understands how I feel um and like even my mum like oh I absolutely adore her love her but she didn't get it and she was like you have so much to be grateful for and I was like yeah I know and I, I even feel bad for feeling like this because I got to live and not everyone else did but then like why why was why did I get to live when no like other people didn't mm. you know and so I think it just made it really hard because it never felt like there was someone could understand I don't think no one can understand unless no. they've been through that. Have you been through something similar? No, I haven't been through anything like that, so no. I can't understand. But it, it is it is that sort of concept of it just doesn't feel like there's any hope at all and, like, the days just feel long. Like, just everything felt like... Was was this during the period of, like, when COVID was happening as well, wasn't it? Or was this um, after... So this was just before COVID had uh, happened. Because I see on the podcast that you was talking that, like... Obviously, COVID didn't help because you had to stay in your house, like, yeah. 24-7 lockdown, obviously. So do you think that also played, like, a big part into why you, like, was basically stuck suffering? Um, I don't know. In a way, I think it just helped me hide away from the world from a little bit. Like, a little bit more, like I didn't have to get up. So, oh, it's really hard to say. Yeah, may maybe it made it worse, but then maybe it just helped me... Hide. Yeah. yeah. When all you wanted to do was hide. Yeah, yeah it may like maybe it really... helped you deal with it quicker just because you didn't have to like hide it. Like you said, when you was if you was to go to work or do what you had to do on a normal day, yeah, you might have just shoved it back and just left it there for a while. And you didn't have to explain years, yeah. to anyone why you're not going out or why you're not coming out or why you're not doing this because no one else was doing that anyway. Yeah. So it kind of yeah, but like you said, it probably did mask it and maybe help it. Um, help you get through it how did did the going through therapy and that actually help with you or did you find a different way of kind of not getting over it but getting through it I tried like lots of different therapists and I felt some of them were just like picking up you know sometimes they just oh, I just felt like I hadn't found the right one and they kept like picking things out from my past that like yeah they'd make me sad but like I didn't think it was relevant mm. 
And so I'd finish the because they didn't have session. like no passion in their job. They just it's just they're just doing it. I don't know. I I really don't know what it was, but I just felt like they were picking initially on all the wrong things that I was like, I actually feel worse yeah. having spoken to you yeah. now. <laughs> and I didn't actually think that was possible. <laughs> um, uh, so I, it was just like, oh, this is just horrendous. And then I remember thinking like, I'd put away everything to do with martial arts. I could, couldn't watch any of my footage. I had to put away all the medals. Um, I... I just didn't want to have any memory of it out because it didn't feel like it was me anymore. Um, so then I was like, oh, like, I'm just going to, maybe I'll just try something else. And so then I was like, I'll just do boxing because there's no, there's no pressure in that. Um, you know, like no one knows who I am in the boxing world. And I can like focus on something until I've like found myself again. Yeah. To maybe return to martial arts. And then I remember I had my very first boxing session in the park. Um, and I had like this like brief little like, half a millisecond smile. I was like, no way. If I can have a smile for like that one half split second, like maybe maybe next week or in a month, it might be like two seconds. Mm. But I just needed that like glimmer of hope. Um, and then that's sort of what carried mm. me through. But I think if I didn't have that, then that wouldn't have like motivated me to do anything else. Do you have any, obviously, because being someone who's been through like a bit of a depression, do you have any advice for anyone going through it? Or is it too hard to sort of like navigate through? I'd say like reach out to your friends. I didn't feel like I could be completely honest until after I'd been through the whole thing to be like, by the way, this is how I felt. And they were like, why didn't you say it? And I was like, ah, oh, just because I didn't like want you to feel really upset or I didn't think you'd fully understand when actually there's so much that you can always relate to um you can relate to things in weird ways I think everyone goes through stuff in weird ways yeah totally like everyone's trauma can be the same even though they're on different levels because we all deal with trauma the same if that makes sense yeah for like sure. you might go through something harder than me but if I go through a trauma and you go through a trauma that's harder we're still having that same trauma yeah. Does that make sense of that? Sort yeah, of. yeah, it, it does. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's like, it's like, it's like <laughs> Watch back the footage. <laughs> <laughs> the footage. We understand. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, did understand like, what you meant. Like, yeah. um, every, everyone has like a hard time, but like if you, we, I, I everyone's know, hardest to, time, time is, is their hardest time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's comparable. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely. Mean, but I think with like mental things, they end up being so much harder. Because, you know, when you've got like a physical injury, you can go to the doctors and they're like, this is your treatment plan. You do X, Y and Z and in six months you'll be fine. When it's something like internal or mental that like, you know, there, there isn't that plan. There isn't mm. if you do X, Y and Z, you'll, you'll feel fine in three months or they're like, ah, oh, we didn't. all of these things may or may not work. And this might happen next week or it might happen in four years or it's so vague. It's like, <laughs> what am I even trusting? That does, doesn't feel like there's hope. Has it that, doesn't feel like there's a plan. Has, yeah. it, has that made you a stronger person going through that though? Do you now understand life a little bit more? It's definitely made me more um, like compassionate and empathetic for people in, in that situation. Mm. I was definitely guilty if people had said before, oh, I'm just feeling a bit down today. I'd be like, oh, like smile, do something. Now I'm literally like, oh, this is the last thing you want to be hearing, mm. you know? Um, and I feel like it's really helped me with physical injuries now that if I get a physical injury, I'm like, oh, thank God. Like literally, thank God it's not like a mental injury because we, we've got a plan to to heal this right. and I can actually actively see progress. Do you think it's a way that like medical professionals might deal with it then? Do you think if they dealt, not deal with it, but you think if they worded things better or gave a bit more hope in what they're saying, it could be a better experience for people to get out of it? I think if it was a bit more prescriptive, like if you were actually given active things to do uh, or to follow, I think that would really help. Because I think when I first started, like I didn't even know what I was looking for. I was like, like, am I looking for a counsellor? Am I looking for a therapist? I didn't really know what I was looking for. And I didn't know what made it go. I think because the lines are blurred. I think when it comes down to mental stuff, they don't really understand. Unless they're a passionate person. And maybe if they've been through something else. It's like when you go to the doctor. 
sometimes they just don't know what the fuck they're on about. They just look on a database and they're like, oh yeah, this is you. <laughs> this tablet might this work. This would be great. And <laughs> yeah. like, and then they're get... actually Googling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they're Googling while you're there. <laughs> Smiling at you like. <laughs> Did but you then, find this too? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just but seeing then, the first thing on Google. Wikipedia. Oh yeah, that, that, might, that might work. This sounds like your problem. Let's, let's get... But then you'll get other doctors that actually be like, oh no, just try this first before you go to this and then maybe we'll look at this and then you're like, oh yeah, you get it. But some people just don't get it, I think. Yeah. And I think especially with like the whole like mental aspect, you have to really click with them to trust them. So it's hard just to like... Start speaking to someone that yeah, you like don't know. Yeah, like completely open up and share everything about Some people, people it's just their like... jobs as well at the end of the day. Yeah. It's, it's, like, it's... Some people say that with f- therapy and that, they ha- you, like you have to... This is what people say anyway. I've never been through it, but they say you have to keep trying to find someone like you have to test loads of different people because you what well, you just won't connect with certain people or, but then you're not how many different people you're going to go through yeah i mean like, i think hard. i went through about maybe five or six yeah but now i see now, now i have like a mindset coach for for boxing and like we speak every single week because like in my mind it's like having a personal trainer you know like you don't wait until you're overweight to then like go get physical help like you just like have that constant buffer to keep you in check uh and it just felt that when i'd gone through the ptsd and like that depression it was very reactive Mm. it was like oh my god now i really need help like ah what do i do and i'm scrambling around whereas now i always have like a regular checkpoint and i think it just helps me feel like i can manage life so much better yeah no I've, i've heard a lot of footballers speak about that as well actually saying that they've um got people that i don't know i don't know what it's called i remember daniel sturridge spoke about it. do you know what it's called though i think it is mindset. oh it's got his mindset yeah, coach yeah, yeah. yeah a lot of footballers say because of the pressures of football but they they've speak to someone now on an on an occasion like it is personal training really yeah um well so, i think the, the mind like it's, it's what you need to train because life can get so hectic yeah, yeah. And you get you, you can end up being a prisoner to your own mind and that's the sad truth Totally. And I think that's not even in the education system. Like, you know, as you're growing up as a kid, you have like PE and you have exercise and you kind of know to eat healthy and to be healthy. But no one ever tells you, like, if you have like really negative thoughts, this is what you do. Mm. Or, you know, like you'll constantly self-sabotage it. You know, like no Mm. one tells you any of that stuff. You just sort of like have your own little thing going on in your head. No one talks about it. I think because a lot of people don't know. The sad thing about school is when you come out of school, you have to basically learn you then relearn. you learn yeah you have to relearn everything yeah you do like you can, <laughs> so you've basically gone to school for no reason because you have to come out and unlearn everything and relearn how the actual real world works yeah. sort of thing you're kind of like more of a social aspect of school isn't yeah it? yeah no it's crazy but and then you got into boxing after that and that kind of regave you um sort of brought you out of the depression yeah. And gave, gave you a spark yeah. back, as you would say, because you are. Gave me back my yeah. fire. Yeah, yeah. She's, the only person, she's the only person who's walked in all bubbly like, yeah. oh, yeah. <laughs> So, no, it's, 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 it is, yeah. though. You can feel it, though. Um, 